Hey everybody, Eric Wagner here with another video. In most of my videos, I usually cover one topic and go from start to finish with it. In this video, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to cover a whole bunch of different topics in short little vignettes. In fact, they're written up there. That one in particular happens to look pretty good. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and jump right into it. Here I have an ArcMap MXD with a couple layers, symbologies, and labels called Water System Map MXD. If I go into ArcGIS Pro on the Insert tab, I can click on Import Map, navigate to wherever that MXD is stored, select it, let it import, and we'll see that our map with its symbology, labels, and everything has now been brought into ArcGIS Pro. In ArcGIS Pro, it's easy to make a copy of a layer. If a layer is selected and you press and hold the control button while clicking and dragging on a layer, you can drag above and below to add the, second, the same layer a second time. Once the layer has been pasted, you can then work with it, such as change the attributes or the symbology. So that way you can have the same layer being used twice in the map, helping you visualize your data. Need to pan when already working with the tool in ArcGIS Pro? That can be done by pressing, holding, and dragging the center scroll wheel button on your mouse. In this case, I started digitizing a line along Johnson Road, but I need to go off screen. So by clicking and dragging and holding, we'll see that my cursor will turn into the pan hand so I can pan. And then when I release, it'll go right back to the digitizing tool. In ArcGIS Pro, you can update attributes for multiple features at the same time. By clicking on the attribute button in the map tab or in the edit tab, you'll get the option to select one or more features Select your features that need to have attributes updated, such as these unknown manufactured fire hydrants. And over here, instead of going single feature one at a time, you can click on all of your hydrants, all 12 that have been selected, and then go down here, change it from unknown to whatever your value is, and see that those values will update across all your features. Definition queries allow you to filter features based upon attributes. So let's say I only want to show hydrants that are made by the manufacturer of Cori. I can double click on my layer to open its properties, go to the definition queries tab, and build a new query just as though I was doing select by attributes. I could say manufacturer is equal to Cori, and now it will only show features that meet that criteria. If you have a layer in ArcGIS Online that you want to edit through a pro environment, such as this mains layer that I have in ArcGIS Online, this is possible. Within Pro, I can open up the Catalog pane, click on the Portal tab, and then go through my folders to navigate to wherever that hosted feature layer is stored. I can then add it onto my map. At which point, I can begin to edit it through the Editing tab as though it was a regular layer stored locally on my device. If I were to zoom in, go on this new feature, Save my edits. I'll now be able to see back in ArcGIS Online that that line will be added. If you have a folder connection that you always want to have appear in new ArcGIS Pro projects, we can set this as a default setting. Within the catalog pane, click on Favorites, Add an Item, choose Add Folder, and navigate to your folder or server location that you always want to have as part of new projects. In my case, I'll choose Desktop and press OK. I'll then right click on it and say add to new projects. Now when I open up new ArcGIS Pro projects, we'll see that if I go into folders, that folder connection is now present. The Living Atlas has a wide variety of real-time weather data that you can add to your ArcGIS Online or Pro maps. I can add a layer, switch to Living Atlas, search for weather, and I can pull in something like weather watches and warnings with detailed attribute information, or I can pull in recent weather radar imagery and hit the time button to see it appear on the map. The Living Atlas also has real-time stream gauge data. By adding this into the map and clicking on any feature, we can see the data that's coming in real-time from NOAA, including the flow graph. You can create new hosted feature layers directly within ArcGIS Online in your contents page. If you click on New Item, 
Feature layer, build a layer. You can then choose whether you want a lines, point, polygon, table, or all of them combined together. I'll choose points, click create. I can rename this to be whatever I want this to say. Add Z values or GPS receiver information. Choose my general extent for data collection. Give it a name, press done. I'll now have a new hosted feature layer that I can add to my web maps and apps. If I have a CSV table containing latitude and longitude information, I can quickly and easily drag and drop this into an ArcGIS online web map to create a visualization of this data. If you have a hosted feature layer in ArcGIS online that has a series of sublayers like this, adding it to a web map means that the computer will automatically add all of the sublayers at the same time. If you only want to add one layer, you can come into the hosted feature layer, click on the layer of interest, such as fire hydrant in this case, click the copy button next to URL, go into your web viewer, choose to add a layer, and add a web service. Paste in the URL, and click add to map. If you're working with a hosted feature layer and you realize that you're not able to add attachments in the field or in the office, as with the case with this higher fire hydrant feature class, within ArcGIS Online, we can go to that hosted feature layer that has the hydrants layer, click the enable attachments button. And now when we go back into ArcGIS field maps, after we've reloaded the map, we'll be able to see that now we have the ability to add attachments with the take photo or attach button. The colors and symbols you choose can improve map readability. In this case, I want to choose a better symbol from my fire hydrants layer. So I'll click on the circle square triangle to change my style. I'll go into options, click on symbols, and from the drop down, I have a whole bunch of options. And in particular, I'm going to go down to utilities water. But you can see we also have this for sewer and storm water. I can go in here and now pick from the symbols provided to come up with a better option. I'll choose this option here, change the size, press OK, press OK again, then press Done, and I have my new map symbology. Just like a definition query in ArcGIS Pro, we can filter a layer in ArcGIS Online. If I go to my layer, click on the Filter button, I can write a quick expression for something such as requires immediate attention is yes, apply the filter, and we'll see we're left with fewer data points on the map. And here's the final video tip of them all. This one will maybe combine a couple items together. You can actually create your own custom symbology with animations and bring it in to your online web maps. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and I did some searching around and I found a pulsating circle, a hollow fill GIF that gives me something like this. I'll right click on it, copy the image address, go back into my map, and for those urgent map change requests from the previous demo, I'm going to change my symbology. We'll make them be show location only. Choose options. And for symbols, instead of doing the process we saw before, I'm going to click on use an image and paste in that URL that I just stole from elsewhere. And we can see our pulsating symbology is added. I'm going to make it a little bit larger and press OK. Press OK, and then press Done. This is not particularly helpful, but if I turn on my maintenance needs and then move the urgent value below all of them, we can now see we have our urgent and non-urgent maintenance needs with the pulsating symbol behind those that are urgent, helping draw users' attention to the more important objects on the map. Oh man, I gotta tell you what, we really covered a lot in this video. Things in ArcGIS Pro, ArcGIS Online, Living Atlas, and a whole bunch of different tips and tricks that you can see here on the screen. So I really hope this was helpful to you. And as always, thanks for watching.